Okay, so for this guy, this is kind of a little bonus. Um, I was like, well, what if, let's go ahead and go to 3D here. Um, and let's turn on our little, there we go, our loft. So I'll preview that. Um, so what if we wanted to put some structural ribs or something in here? I know you can do it as a solid piece, but maybe you start to think about, well, maybe you want this to be open on the bottom, closed on, whatever you want to do, but let's just put some structural ribs in here and see how that works. So um, what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to hide uh, that loft so you can't see it. So I'm going to get rid of the preview so that kind of goes away. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use these profiles that we created to put points on the ends of these lines and then create a NURBS curve that goes through there and then we're going to put some Revit structural framing on it. Um, you could put a column on it but the columns are, they have a hard time. Sometimes they break a lot so I tend to use the framing of it. But the way we're going to do it is, so this very first um, curve that we made, this guy, this polygon, right, which is the very base one right here, or right here, um, you can take it and explode that geometry. So if I pull this into a geometry explode, right, um, what it's going to do is it's going to give me all of those lines, right, so separate that joined polyline back into the lines. Um, and then I can go to curve start point and that will give me the start point of each one of those lines and you can see it drawing those points in here, right? So it's saying, oh, there's all your points, which is our first start point. Now we're going to do that for each one of these so we have a series of points that we can connect and create a NURBS curve from. So I'll just do the same thing. I've got it kind of set up already. So here's my second curve and I'll plug that into the geometry explode so you can see it creating the points there. And then the last one is the um, poly curve from the pull. So if I take that poly curve and push that in, right, whoops, should really have undid that. Let's undo the NURBS curve by points, right? So I'll undo that so you can't see it. So basically now I have points on the bottom and also points on the top and points on the middle that I've created. And if I go back to the graph, um, you can see I've created a list that gathers all three of those points. So if I come in here, you can see from this list all three of those point gatherings. Now if I drew a line right now, it would just recreate those on the flat surface. But what I can do is I can transpose that list so it takes all the zeros and put them in one um, sublist and all the ones. So you can see here's 1.5, 3.7, so 1.5, 3.7. And so it's looking at those um, as they're going vertically and connecting those into groups to draw a line. So if I use that to draw a line with, which is this NURBS curve through points, if I plug that in, right, it'll create, right, those lines that run through that. So if I take a look right and zoom you can see it's creating right lines up to that to that so once I get back to the graph what I can do um, you have to flatten the list I'm not sure why um, but I had to flatten the list to get it to work May, maybe not let's try it maybe it was just the columns that I was using first maybe we'll pull this out and try it without that um, but what you want is structural fr the structural framing beam by curve um, and so if you type in structural framing, oh, sometimes it's a little annoying. Um, you can go get it um, from Revit and if you go to elements um, and you go down all the way down to structural framing you'll get beam by curve. I think also if you just do beam by curve, maybe, oh, it's so hard to find, there it is. If you do beam, you'll get beam by curve. Um, so you need to pull that out. And then in Revit, what you need to do is you need to go to the insert and you need to load a family in the Revit file that's open. 
and you just want to go to your English Imperial Library and I'm going to use structural framing. Again there's a structural column but it tends to break a lot so I don't use it. So go to your structural framing. I'll go to wood and let's just get um, some LDL veneer lumber. I'll open that and then I'll go to load family and maybe I'll get a piece of steel. So if I go to steel and maybe I'll get a I don't know could get a wide flange right and maybe it doesn't have to be that big maybe a ten by nineteen and we'll load those two and if I come in first thing I'll I'll pick the let's pick the wood one so I'll pick the wood here right and it'll load that in and then I need to take this NURBS curve and place it into this curve, right? And you'll see it creates in Revit those pieces. Now they're a little wonky, like they're kind of flat, right? You see how they're going flat? Um, and if we look at them over here, they're kind of flat. You can take them and if you go into the cross-section rotation, you can actually rotate them and kind of get them and you could also pull them down lower you know if you wanted to pull that down but you can come in and kind of start to play around with them and get them in a f orientation that maybe is more favorable to um, what you want this one looks like maybe 45 or something but right so you can kind of play around with them and and see you know maybe even 45 for this one it might be a consistent number looks like 45 is working pretty well. This one looks more like 90, right? So you might have to play around with them a little bit um, to get them to work, right? To get them to um, do what you want them to do. Let's pick this guy, right? So you can kind of see like these guys. If we do 45, does that make it better or worse? Worse? So negative 45, whoops, right, so kind of starting to get there a little bit, but you can see what I mean. Um, and so you have these structural pieces um, that should work. You could also, um, let's see if it'll let me, I wonder if it'll let me do it in Revit, that's kind of interesting. If it'll let me just flip it out for the 10 by 19. No, I think this overrides it. So you could try flipping this out for the 10 by 19. There you go. And then that'll flip out, right? So now I've got steel in there. Um, so it's kind of up to you um, how you end up working it out. You know, there are some issues with the way that it ends up intersecting with all of this. You know, especially if it's really curvy, but, um, all right, that's it.